am Dr. Pavitra Bharadwaj. Uh, I am Associate Professor in the Department of Computer Science, Jesus and Mary College. So friends, we have been uh, talking in the last lecture about the different types of controls which are available on the form a tag or the form option of the HTML5 basically and we were talking about some specific controls which will help the user input different types of options or different types of data. For example, you know we had talked about the slider control in which if the user wants to give a option within a range, right? you want to give let the user choose between a range say between 1 and 100 or between high and low you know that kind or between you know you sometimes we see in feedback analysis we see forms where you have agree disagree or neither agree nor disagree kind of things. So in that kind of you know scenarios the slider control can be very useful. Then the next type of control that we see is the spinner control. Again the spinner control is also similar to that only which is similar to the uh, slider control. But here we will allow the user to choose a number or you know to we can give a min and a max to it. Say for example, if you want the user to rate something out of 5, right. So you can give 5 for very poor and you can give uh, say you can give uh, 1 for excellent types. So you can give the minimum and the maximum value and the user can choose out of this from the spinner control. So in this case the values are going to appear like they are spinning on a particular vertical axis that way. Then you know earlier when we used to ask user to enter a date before HTML5, we had to give three drop down menus or three select options for date, month and year. But now in HTML5 we have a very useful control called the calendar control. You know you can say it is a calendar control. However, you identify it with date. So, you will write input type is equal to date. You can give a name to it, you can give an ID to it. So, then when you are specifying this, say for example, choose your date of birth or specify your date of appointment, whatever. So, then you can give this input type is equal to date and a proper calendar is going to come automatically which is given by the HTML5. So, input type is equal to date will display a calendar on the user screen. So likewise, you know, we talk about so many different controls which are there, which are available on the form and that make the user's experience very uh, friendly with the website. And it is also very important, you know, that the form that is being given to the user should be easy to fill and it should allow for minimum amount of typing, minimum amount of data should be keyed in, otherwise the user you know loses interest and does not want to fill your form. So designing the form is also a very technical aspect which involves a lot of you know effort and which involves a lot of thinking that goes you know in human behavior and human psyche as in how to motivate users to fill in your forms which are available on the website. Now we had discussed that you know we are talking about the front end but definitely whatever data is being collected in the uh, form or whatever data is being given in the browser that has to be sent to some server, right. So there has to be a server side processing which has to take place, right. So whenever you know the browser or the user requests for some web pages through the browser, then the related files are to be fetched from the server. So the browser is giving a request to the server, the server is locating the files and it sends them to the browser and then the browser will render the returned files and display the requested web pages for the user to use. So continuously you know this HTTP request and HTTP response mechanism goes in between the web browser and the web server. Now of course we are talking about at this juncture we are talking about the client side uh, technologies that are used but at the server side also you know a large number of technologies can be used and all of these technologies they offer particular solutions and they offer very robust environments which can be created. So for server side scripting you know we can have different technologies like you can have the PHP, we can have Adobe Cloud Fusion, we can have Java server, uh, you know Sun Java server pages or we can have the ASP.NET. 
so basically all these you know they will require direct execution that is the script will be running either by the web browser itself or it will be running by the web server right so either the web server will run the script that is a script which is written in php or there is an extension module which you have written in the web server that is going to run the script so more about you know the server side programming we will talk in the next phase of this series at the moment we are concentrating more on the client side designing of web pages or the client side programming so after you know as i just as i said that after html finishes or where html stops we start using the another option or a more enriched version of html you can say that is known as the css or the cascading style sheets now what is cascading style sheets basically these are you know they are standards and you know there are some properties like for example for all the attributes we have discussed a set, uh, for all the tags or for all the controls we have discussed a set of properties right a set of attributes right through which you can control the behavior of that particular tag but you know beyond that also you have attributes which can be specified you can you know create a style of your own for your particular web page right so the idea is that we want to you know because we say that html is a markup language right so markup language means that you are using some kind of markups like you are using the p tag or the other tag right so we are further going to separate the markup from the semantics of the page right so we are going to give certain rules which will determine how the markup will contain the markup okay and these rules will cascade to the more specific rules which are there right so what are style sheets style sheets we will specify certain rules and using those rules you will create a style of your own so you will go one step beyond the attributes that you have learned in html so far and you will learn other attributes which you can specify other ways of specifying the properties of the different tags right so we are going to create the rules which will specify how the content of an element will appear right say for example we we know that you know in so far what we have done we have specified the background of a page but if you want that one paragraph should appear in gray background okay a particular paragraph should appear in another color background or it should appear the font of a particular paragraph you want to control or you want to control that all the headings should come in a particular style say they want to come in italic and they want to come in uh, they have to come in blue color so all this kind of you know micro management if we do using html it will be very very tedious so what we are trying to do is that we are going trying to separate the two right because so far we have seen that html looks into two things it looks into the semantics like if you are specifying h1 tag right so h1 means that that element is a top level heading right then there is a presentation element using which you can specify how that h1 is going to look if you are giving an h1 how that h1 is going to look so we are now going to talk about so far we have discussed about the semantics part of the html that is h1 will specify the heading level top level heading but now we will see how the html can the how the h1 tag can look in a certain way right so it is always better you know that we separate the semantics from the presentation because why because i want to make my page easier to be presented right you you want to present your document on multiple platforms now, right now we are designing websites which will work which will open on the browser which can be open on a cell phone you know which can be which can speak so there are different platforms on which your browsers or on which your document will be accessed right so therefore we need to generate documents which will have a consistent look that is your website should look the same way irrespective of on what 
you know device you are going to open it right so what we do is that we separate the presentation part from the semantics part so what will happen with this that we can control the presentation separately because now they are independent so you control the presentation and you can make the changes in the presentation without having to change the semantics of your page right so htm the, therefore you know css is very very important because it will really help us fix the clutches which are there in html it will help us separate the content from the display that is the content from the presentation and it will give us far more options for displaying the content as i said so the page which is designed only using html whereas a page which is designed using css is going to be a marked degree ahead of the page right so it brings in a lot of efficiency in the whole process right like for example we take this example uh, here we are using the h1 tag and for h1 we are specifying a font color we are saying the font color is red the face is georgia times roman or times serif right so what we are saying that you are specifying a heading level 1 in red color georgian font okay right so every time you want that your h1 should behave you should have your uh, you know uh, red color georgian font you have to repeat the whole thing you have to either retype it or cut or paste it but you have to define the behavior of your h1 tag each time you are using the h1 now you can very well imagine that in a website how many times you would be using that heading level one and for each heading level one say h1 you are using you have to define the attributes like the font color you have to specify the font size and the font face right so this is not a very wise thing to do instead the best thing would be that we define the properties of the h1 in one go and later on we only use the h1 tag and automatically the properties of the h1 tag will be shown to us so for this what we are going to use we are going to use the style rules or the css rules right so what is the syntax of the css that we are going to use if you want to define a style you will first write the name of the selector selector means the name of the tag that you are using then in curly braces you will write the property colon value for that property okay like you will write say for example you can see we have written the selector is the paragraph that is the tag for which we are specifying the properties then you can give the property name the property name say for example is background color then you give a colon and you give a value so you write background dash color colon yellow or font dash color colon red okay so likewise you can specify the properties for that particular selector and when you specify the properties once the properties can be reused by the selector or by that particular tag that you are using this has to be noted that the property and value pair is separated by a semicolon and two sorry by a colon and two properties are separated by a semicolon so this syntax is important another thing is that the properties are specified they are pre specified right so the way you are using the way you are writing the property also needs to be checked like for example you cannot write it the way you like you have to write background dash color or font dash color right so the properties are pre specified and you can give a value out of the range of values which are permissible then properties you know when you are choosing the uh, selectors you can use three different ways you know you can use actually four ways in which you can specify the property for a particular element so you can specify for a single element like you can see here it is specified for the p element alone so you only specify for one element you write the curly braces you write the property like for example here we have written font size is equal to font size colon smaller and letter spacing we have given some letter spacing then you can specify the properties for multiple elements like for h1 h2 h3 we can write 
separated by comma and we give the background we give the property 1. So, now what will happen in this case all H1 to H6 will have the background color purple. So, we are specifying it only once because for 6 tags if you want the same background color you can put them as 1. Then if you want for all element types you want a particular property then you can specify that using an asterisk. So, you instead of writing the name of the tag we simply write star. So, in this case what will happen that the font weight of all the elements will be bold right. As I already said these property names are pre specified like background color, font weight, font size, letter spacing all these are pre specified. So, when we take up each element, when we take up each tag we get to know the different properties that we can specify. Then we have you can also specify the property by the specific elements by giving the particular ID right. So, we will talk about classes and within the class how you can define the elements uh, you know of within a class. So, you can do that way also. So, that this the last option which is there that is using the by defining the classes in CSS ok. Now, you know there are different ways in which you can incorporate your style sheets in your HTML right. So, there are actually three ways by which you know style definition can be given in your HTML page. The first definition, the first way in which style definition can be added is by giving an external style sheet. External style sheet means that we will create a separate file in which we will write the style definition and we will save that file using the CSS extension and we will link the CSS file with our HTML file ok. So, this is known as external style sheet why because the style definition is residing in an external file and you are cre you are creating a link between your HTML file and your CSS file. Another way of you know putting your style sheet can be embedding it into your HTML document. So, in the head portion of your HTML document you will use the style element or the style tag and within that using the style element you can write the style definition. Like you can see here in this example it is shown that this is a head portion in head you have title and then you write the style type is equal to text oblique CSS and you give the style definition for heading level 1 and heading level 2. You close the style and you close the head right. So, this way you can embed your style definition within your web page, within your HTML page. And the third type or the third way in which you know it can be done is by using the style attribute right. This is known as an inline style. So, wherever you are having the attribute there you use the style attribute for that particular tag and you define the style ok. Now, obviously you know we, we know that these are three levels of definition that we are using. In one the style definition is remaining outside the web page, in the other it is coming within the web page and in the third it is you know coming as an inline that is for one particular instance of that web page. So, if you look at this particular example here you can see that uh, an inline style has been defined for the p tag. So, for the p tag we are writing in the body we are writing p and we are writing style is equal to and we are defining the different properties like color, text align and font size ok. So, this is inline style ok. In embedding you we will define the style in the head portion ok and so whatever changes you are doing in the embedded will be applicable for all the h1 tags in that web page. For web page you have say 10 h1 tags. So, all the 10 h1s will inherit the property that has been defined in the style definition in the head portion right. So, and then you have so this will be embedded style definition ok and then you can have an external 
style definition that is using the linking. Okay. Now, because why is the whole thing called as a cascading style sheet that we will discuss that you know because we are defining the style at three levels. You see we are defining it as outside within the web page or within one instance of the tag. right? So, therefore, the rule or the way this will be accepted or the way this will be executed in case the same property has been defined at three levels that is that is a matter of you know cascading or that comes under the domain of cascading right so in uh, cascading style sheet we can also you know create classes as i said so you can create a class say for example we have created a class called red okay so you simply in the style definition you write uh, dot red so what we are doing is that we are creating a class red in which we are specifying the color the font family okay now whichever element whichever tag whether it is h1 tag or it is p tag whichever will be a part or a member of this class that will inherit the properties of the class that is that will come in red color and the particular font family say for example here in h1 we are writing h1 class is equal to red so what will happen that whatever text you are giving in this h1 that will come in red color and belong to the font family that is given here likewise you can also give for p so here i am using the same class i am defining for the paragraph tag so here also it will be the same thing that the paragraph will now come in red color and using the different font uh, using the font family which has been defined right so what are we doing we are actually creating a class and that class can be inherited or the properties of the class that we are defining can be used by different elements not just the same element but it can be used by paragraph it can be used by heading level it can be used by any other tag of the uh, you know on the web page right now the third option that we are defining is the linking of style sheet that is external style definition so here what we will do as i explained that we will create a, the style definition in a separate file okay so we will create a style definition in a file and we will save that file separately using the css extension and then in your html document you will create a link in the head portion so you can see here we have created a link for the style sheet so we are writing the tag we are writing link relationship is equal to style sheet because this this is actually this link is uh, working for a style sheet this is going to relate a style sheet the type of the document is either text or a css document and then you give the href that is you give the link or you give the path of your style sheet so what will happen whatever definition you have given in your style sheet in your css file that is my style.css all that definition will be used or all that definition will be applicable to this html file now if in your website there are say 100 pages so the 100 pages if you will put this line they will all inherit the same style definition right so what is the advantage that you do not have to give the entire definition for example you have given this definition here so you do not have to inherit you do not have to write this definition in each of the web pages you have you only write it once and for all other pages you create a link to that particular css file right so what happens here that a lot of redundancy a lot of effort is saved also if you want to change anything you only have to make the change in your css file you do not have to change the uh, multiple instances of you know the tag wherever it is coming so it, it this is a very very modular approach of you know creating the style definition for your particular web page so we will be discussing more on style sheets and about cascading in the following lectures please keep watching cc thank you